Hello everyone, it's I, Wacky Anime What If here, here to present you with What If Issei Was Betrayed and Ate the Ito Ito No Mi, the finale. Let's go ahead and get into it. POV, Sir Zex. Currently, Sir Zex is in his office, alone, drinking a bottle of wine while thinking to himself, Why am I not happy? I killed my sister's murderer. She was avenged, so what is this empty feeling in my chest? As he stares at the bottle of wine in his hands and says, You look so pathetic. As he says this, he continues staring into the wine, seeing a man with red hair all over the place, very messy, with the dark circles under his eyes, which are completely bloodshot and tears running down his face. He then notices he is just staring at a reflection of himself. He immediately throws the bottle towards the door, not hearing it open. POV, Milikis, moments prior. I wanted to check on my father. After all, I have not seen him in two days and have been forced by my mother to stay with my grandma for those two days. I could tell he must be sad. So I made him something that I hope will cheer him up. He thinks this while walking towards his father's office. He held in his hands a cup he made with his grandma that says world's best dad as he makes it towards the door he hears his father talking to himself but he hears no one respond in the room so he knocks on the door but gets no response so he decides to open the door as he does he sees his father with an anger expression on his fi- all over his face and all of a sudden he feels something hit the right side of his face and he starts to fall back. As he does, the cup he made falls out of his hands and shatters to the gr- goes to the ground, shattering. As he is on the ground, he falls, feels immense pain, but also notices something wrong. Way, way worse than the pain. The fact that he can no longer see out of his right eye, he holds the right side of his face and feels glass in it. He cries and gets off the ground while looking down, not trying to see his father's face. He turns around and ran out of the out of the office, tears in his left eye, and blood in the other. As he runs out of the office, he heard his father say something, but couldn't hear it. And even if he did, he wouldn't have cared as he ran as fast as possible out of the Grimmery household. POV, Sir Zex, as I threw the bottle, I didn't notice until it was too late that the door was opening. As it did, I saw my son walk in, only to be hit on his right side of his face with the very bottle I threw, and I saw him fall down. As this happened, I felt everything stop in that moment, as that empty feeling in my chest evolved into a more painful feeling as I held my chest and started to breathe rapidly. Feeling as if everything was just stopped. As if my chest started to stop. My entire heartbeat started to beat rapidly but stopped at the same time. It was a horrible feeling. I felt as if thousands of pins were in my chest, digging into them. But it only got worse as... I ended up trying to speak, but it's like nothing would come out. But the worst part was when he stood back up. I noticed noticed before he turned around that there was glass stuck in the middle, direct middle of his eye. The feeling I felt in my chest felt a thousand times worse, and I could no longer breathe in or out anymore. I tried to muster out any words, anything I could. But all that came out was, wait, (coughs) don't go, I'm sorry. As I see him leave, I start to grasp at my chest that was in pain before trying to get out of my chair to go after him only to fall to the ground in pain, feeling as if my heart would burst, it would shatter into millions of pieces as my breath would leave me. As my eyes grew heavy, the last thing I saw and heard made it all much worse. It was a broken cup. That says, world's best dad was the last thing I saw, but the last thing I heard was what sounded like thousands of screams. POV, Issei. As I was looking around, 
seeing all the devils in sight, being torn to pieces by Maxwell, who would casually pick them up and grab them by the shoulders and pull on opposite sides, splitting them in half before using his claws to cut them into little pieces. Being as messy as possible, rushing devils left and right, punching their heads off, or just straight up crushing them, unlike Cyrus, who just maneuvers through the devils by turning her fingernails into panther claws and her legs into panther legs, allowing her to speed through them quickly before they could even realize they died. It's quite funny that their faces were so confident before she passed by them and... Immediately that confidence was gone as I looked around, only for their neck to be in immense pain and blood to spew out and then their face being horrified as I slowly fell to the ground. The, their face going to absolute horror as I w watched it was absolutely fascinating. I found it amazing. It was the best entertainment I could ask for. But as I was watching this, I spotted a certain child of the Grimmery household, but his right eye seems to have a glass shard lodged inside. Seems interesting if what I think happened did. Maybe I can use this. As Issei is thinking this, he notices a building near the child that looks on the verge of collapsing. Why don't I help it a little bit more? As he says this, he points his left index finger directly towards it, and a thin but sharp string rushes out of his index finger towards the building, then he swipes his finger to the side, and the building begins to completely collapse. As it does, Issei can only think three words in his head. It's showtime. POV Milicus, moments prior, as I ran out of the Grimmery estate, I, with my head down and eyes clouded by tears, I kept running, thinking, Why did you do this to me, Father? Was I not good enough? As I thought that, that in my head, not daring to look upwards, even while I was rushing through, I was going to continue looking downwards, thinking more things until I heard something loud. I looked up to see a building had just collapsed beside me. I see a giant piece of debris about to fall on me. Time felt slower. I couldn't help but have flashbacks of all the times I had with my family, my sister, and mother. The most important moments of my life until I got to my dad. I thought about all the good times. All the times he looked at me with an infection. And immediately I thought in my head, was it all a lie? The love I felt from you? As the debris was getting closer and more tears came out, I screamed for someone, anyone to save me. Then in an instant, someone appeared in front of me and raised his right hand above us. And thousands of strings came out and destroyed the debris in an instant. As that happened, I fell to my knees since the adrenaline from my body was most likely gone and my pain only intensified. I felt my remaining eye going heavy, but I wanted to stay awake to at least get a glimpse of my savior, not just his back as he turned around. POV Issei, destroying the debris was easy, now let's see, Milicus. Now as I turned around, I noticed more clearly that the glass lodged into his eye was one from an, an expensive wine bottle. So I guess I can get the picture, seeing how he looked earlier when I saw him. I walked towards him as he looked on the verge of collapse. I said with a smile, Hey, would you like for me to make the pain go away? Immediately he nodded slowly with a tired look. I yelled out, Cyrus, I need your help over here. Like clockwork, she immediately appeared beside me and asked what I needed, I responded as such, I need you to heal his eye, I know it won't restore it, but it should make the pain go away. She immediately used a spell to numb his pain, before quickly removing the glass directly from Milicus's eye, before he could even tell what was happening, then healed his eye in a mere instant, before anything could even be registered by Milicus, as he ended up looking directly towards them, immediately 
Issei decided to say, Why don't you follow Cyrus so she can tell you something your dad has done? I looked toward Cyrus to see if she would catch up on my little plan. She nodded her head and quickly I walked towards Milicus and held out. She immediately walked towards Milicus and held out her hand and they walked together. M me and Cyrus ended up passing by each other. I whispered into her ear, bring him to the mansion after you talk about how bad Sir Zex is, but wait 30 minutes afterwards. She walked past me. With Milicus, after I whispered this, I smiled before thinking, I think it's about time for me to reclaim what's mine and get rid of the last few loose ends. I think it's time to cut them loose. POV, Sir Zex. I give up. Everything is up in flames and destroyed. My son is out there somewhere. I know I should be doing something. I should be looking for him, but I feel nothing but emptiness inside. I, if I found him, would he even be alive? Or would I just find a corpse? Is anyone I love alive? My parents were found dead a few weeks ago when they went to the human world for important business. Then Rius dies. Then I get drunk and injure my only son. And he runs into the mess all around me as I look around. Only to notice not just the flames burning and raging around buildings and dozens of screams, but also the threads of what looks like a giant bird cage surrounding everything in sight. Ironic. I feel like a bird in a cage now. I actually am one. <laughs> I drink from the bottle in my left hand, then I then hear what sounds like footsteps heading towards me. I look up and see the man who brought me my sister's killer. I stare at him with empty eyes as he stares at me with a glint in his glasses. He starts to open his mouth and does the most sinister laugh I have ever heard. <laughs> huh. Guess I do look kind of funny. I guess he thought that too. Then he all of a sudden stops laughing and says something. You know the fact this is how... Lo, the mighty Sir Zex has fallen, all because of the death of his mom and dad, along with the slut you call a sister. I immediately get furious. No one calls my sister a slut. I immediately fire destruction magic at him, but he merely jumps upwards out of the way. As it hits the ground, it obliterates the entirety of where he was standing. As the man was in the air, he continues to talk. I see you didn't like me calling that bitch a slut how about a backstabbing thief then i get even more angry i get off the steps i was sitting on and charge some magic and fire it towards him but all he does is maneuver around it i rush at him with destruction magic all around me but all he does is move to my left and swipe my right leg with this i thought his leg would be completely gone because of the destruction magic, but as I fell down to the ground, he lifted his right leg up, which is pitch black, must be some type of reinforcement that I am not aware of. Then he immediately stomps on my stomach as hard as possible. As he does, the ground beneath me breaks, I vomit blood and alcohol up. He lifts his leg up and continues. As his leg is still on my stomach, I try to summon my magic in my left hand and lift it towards him, aiming for his head. But before I can fire, he swipes his right hand and my left hand falls to the ground. Cut off, I scream in pain as he merely smiles at me. I notice that there, there was a string attached that cut off my actual arm. After all, I could see it because of the blood that's dripping off of it. But... As I was staring at it, he immediately looked at me and said, You know, I kind of feel kind of insulted you don't remember me. As he says this, he lifts my me up by the face, lifts me up into the air, and says, I thought we had good times, but I guess, just like your sister, 
you thought of me as a, as a pawn you could dispose of. He then throws me through the front doors of my mansion. As I flew through, he immediately says, Well, let me just tell you, Issei is not someone that you can just easily discard as a pawn. He screams this out, and immediately as I was flying through the doors of the mansion, blowing them off the hinges, I thought, this is Issei who did this, huh? I guess I did deserve this. Immediately I impacted the steps leading to the second floor of the mansion with my back. I start to cough up blood. He walks through the broken doors and says, you know, this is too easy. It's kind of boring, to be honest. Is it because you're drunk, or is it just because you're very weak? I cannot really tell, but oh well. As Issei walks towards me, I start to accept my fate. I mean, what can I do? I've gotten weaker. I'm more tired from the weeks I have stayed up in grief. I'm also still slightly drunk. Even if I wasn't, I doubt I could win. Why fight the inevitable, right? When I started to think that, as he got closer, all of a sudden, the room got colder, and a giant ice glacier appeared beside Issei, and all he did was reinforce his body with that unknown method he used earlier. For his leg earlier, when he used it, it was quite odd, and immediately, he punched the ice glacier. He punched it, but as the shards immediately shattered, as the entire glacier shattered, the shards were in the air. They turned into little ne ice needles and fired at him with immense speed and precision. But all he did was move his head an inch to the left. His moved his arm to his side, his right leg behind him, and all of the needles flew past except ten of them, which he quickly caught all at once with his right hand and threw them directly towards me. And I felt an immense pain and screamed. I checked where they hit, and all ten hit me in the balls. Immediately I thought in my head, why did it have to be the balls? As I thought this, I looked back to what was happening, and noticed Issei looking to the side. I looked as well and saw Grafia. I immediately screamed, Grafia, you should go find Milicus. I deserve this, but Milicus doesn't. Go find him if he is alive. I said this towards her, but all she said was, I will find him after I kill Issei. What happened to him was awful of us to have done, but that doesn't make it make up for slaughtering thousands of people. Stop playing the victim when you're the monster, Issei. As she screamed this towards him, he merely stared at her before POV Issei. I stared towards Grafia and can't help but to laugh a little bit. As they stare at me, I say, Wow, devil's calling a human a monster. How many of you use humans as pawns before throwing them away or taking their sacred gear? How many of you devils look down on humanity or uses them as playthings before disposing of them? And you call me the monster. I won't deny I am a monster. But you all are monsters inside and out, but you're worse than that. You're the worst types. You're hypocrites. As I say this, I rush at Grafia after using armament hockey on my legs and fists. As I get right in front of her in an instant and swing at her, I notice I cannot move forward. Then notice my feet are freezing because of her placing ice magic on the ground so i jump upwards immediately shattering the ice that's on the a little bit of the ice that's on the ground holding me but as i was jumping upwards i decided to dive towards her but she lifted her hands up and the ice on the ground that was still left intact exploded up upwards towards me and turned into ice pillars i immediately used my right fist and punch it downwards and hit one causing it to be smashed into pieces along with the rest from the shock wave that my punch did while still diving towards Grafia with intense speed I noticed all the pieces start forming into needles except unlike last time there are thousands of them rushing towards me so I wrap my ten long strands of string that I form out of my fingertips all around me with little holes 
in the string. I wave them around, quickly catching all of the needle, ice needles, and the holes of the string before launching the string towards Grapia, flinging the needles all out of out of the string, increasing their speed and force overall towards Grapia. She puts a ice barricade in front of her, blocking around 3,000 ice needles before my string cuts it in half, and 1,000 of them go through. She quickly put her hands up in front of her, blocking around 300 needles that were directly embedded into her arms, but the rest ended up in her torso, side, and legs, mostly. But I wasn't done. Since I was finally in front of her and built up tons of momentum along with my hockey in my arms, I swung one punch towards her stomach, causing shockwaves to appear directly behind her, causing her to vomit up blood. Then, another punch towards her face, causing her nose to break. Then I decide to barricade, barrage her with punches, except with each punch a string cut her deeply and went into her body, slicing blood vessels. Her screams were amusing, but all good times end, I guess. As I saw something with my observation hockey that made me smile, I grabbed Grafia by the neck, staring into her horrified face, and threw her beside me, causing Sir Zex... Sir Zex's destruction magic to incinerate her completely. As it did, I saw his face. It had anger. Then that anger turned to horror after realizing what he had just done. He had just murdered his wife, the one he loved more than anyone. I wanted to laugh, but it wouldn't look bad for the guest of honor that would arrive. So I decided to act a little... So I screamed, You bastard! How could you murder your own wife in cold blood? He looked at me in rage and screamed, I didn't mean to, I meant to, before he could speak, he heard someone at the front door scream, first you take away my eye, then you take away my mother, how dare you. We both look at the entrance to see Milicus face, his face was enraged with a dark crimson aura around him and eyes that screamed for death. Issei immediately looks at him and says, I'm so sorry I couldn't save her. The attack he used to kill her was supposed to be for me. I'm so sorry. Issei fell to his knees. Tears could be seen flowing from under his glasses. Milikus walked towards Issei and put a hand on his shoulder and said, It couldn't be helped. You two did your best. He is extremely weak, and I'll kill him myself. As he said this, he gets closer to Sir Zex as Issei slowly gets up, wipes his tears, and smiles at Sir Zex. Behind Milicus, as Milicus readies a ball of destruction in his right hand, he aims it towards Sir Zex's chest and fires it without a single bit of hesitation before it hits directly into Sir Zex. Before he could even get a word out, Issei could see Sir Zex's eyes. Before the ball of destruction hit his chest, they held immense regret and pain. Milicus, after killing his father, ran towards Cyrus, who had silently walked to Issei's side and hugged her as she hugged back. Issei could see Sir Zex was still alive, just barely, so he went towards him and bent down and whispered in his ear, Don't worry, I will take wonderful care of your son. As he said this, he had a smile that terrified Sir Zex before he finally died, and Issei felt very satisfied with his work, as he continued to take over the underworld, and no one could stop his rule. And that is the end of What If Issei Was Betrayed and Ate the Ito Ito no Mi. I hope you all enjoyed this. I'm sorry if I stuttered or anything, but I'm going to be absolutely honest. I honestly did not really feel too well when doing this video I probably should have waited but I didn't want to make you all wait longer than you were supposed to so uh, sorry if this didn't turn out perfect anyway goodbye everyone